Small business is about courage, risk-taking, independence, and we small business owners are survivors. Everybody has an idea for a business, but how do you take that idea from mind to market? This is the place to learn. Small Business School with Hattie Bryant. It's a new kind of school. Together we'll learn about business from the inside out, from the people who've done it. We'll meet the men and women who are today's pioneers and quiet heroes. Their lives are the textbooks. Our classroom is the world. Small Business School is made possible by support from IBM. We're not just for big business anymore. At our website, built just for you, discover how technology can move your business forward. When it's your business, everything matters. IBM. And by Southwestern, providing learning solutions in business and economics. Southwestern is part of the Thompson Corporation. And the United States Postal Service, delivering the promise to America's 23 million small and growing businesses. We're where you live your life, we're where you run your business. Hi, this is Small Business School and I'm Hattie Bryant. In the next 30 minutes, you'll learn how one small business owner has quietly and with precision planning grown his import business based in Tampa, Florida. We're the place to be if you want to understand how business works from the ground up. Our marketing expert is with us. We'll hear from a viewer, and I'll show you what landed in my mailbox straight from cyberspace. Every week, we take you inside a master class. This is the chance for you to meet and hear, in some detail, how one small business owner started a business and how that business has grown into a solid entity. This is a how-to program, but there won't be any recipes put up on the screen because there's no formula for success in business. There are only principles which you can apply. We think the best way for you to grow your business is to see how other people do it. So now, meet Jimmy Fand, a master at business. One couple thought Tampa would be the perfect place to raise a family and at the same time, build a business. Anyone can shop at the Tile Connection, however, most of the business is wholesale to the trade. Jimmy and Maria Fand are importers, offering a huge selection of styles, sizes, colors, and prices. Want to walk on it, cook on it, shower in it, be surrounded by it? They've got it. This particular tile is an actual replica of a real marble called White Carrara Marble. You can see the veining through the surface of the area. It's a high gloss finish which is very popular to Florida, the Asian countries, as well as the Latin American countries. And it was named after us, this, this particular style is named Tampa because of our location in Tampa. And a very beautiful uh, line, this is an 18 by 18 inch style, which in many parts of the country is considered huge. For us, it's a standard size today. Jimmy came to the U.S. from Colombia, Maria from Cuba. They met in New York City, then moved to Florida to raise their children. I came to the States when I was 19 years of age. I'm self-made. Did my studies in New York. It's a city that formated me educationally as well as everything else. I feel a New Yorker deep at heart. But why did you leave Colombia? The reason I, I left Colombia was that I was a high school dropout in the first place. I dropped out of school when I was 14, something I hope my kids never do. And I went traveling. I had a dream of going to every country in the Western Hemisphere, which I was able to accomplish. But that was not fulfilling to me. I needed to learn more and to be some, someone in life. And that's the reason that when I arrived in New York, I decided to go back to school and did all my education there. And you, you said that when you arrived in New York, you felt as if you were home. Yes, I did. New York to me, the, since the first minute I saw the city, it was a place that I identified with. And it was a place that fulfilled my expectations. It was the most incredible, exciting city that I've ever been to. I was a teacher in New York City, but I didn't want to raise my family in New York. And we came to Florida. And finally, we found this paradise area and uh, decided to be in this industry. Many years ago, when uh, we came to this area, I was building a house 14, 15 years ago. And the builder selection of ceramic tile for us was very limited. I went to a color tile store in Clearwater, 
And I saw the prices, and immediately I realized that we had a position in this industry. Uh, I have a degree in geology, and uh, that made me understood immediately what these products are made of and how they're manufactured. So I started looking for a location, warehousing, and suppliers immediately. Most of this style comes from Jimmy Mexico, searches the world for Colombia. the best products. All of this section comes from Italy. Can you name them off, all the countries that you have tile from? We have tile from Spain, Portugal, Colombia, Brazil, Argentina, Japan. We bring tile from all over the world. Right up there, you have a tile made in Turkey. That's a small factory located in Turkey, right over there. To control the inventory as it travels, Jimmy has tight security. I'm very specific as to the type of pallets they use so the pallets don't tilt in the high seas. They need to be thoroughly strapped. They use corner beads to protect the, the merchandise even more. This and, right here. Right. And okay. the containers, as the shipping company uh, prepares those containers, they have to have these type of seals. And the seal has to be unbroken when the merchandise arrives at our doors. Otherwise, someone has tempered with, and we won't accept it, or we write a note to the effect where the broker or the shipping company are responsible for. And that's a way to protect yourself in case the containers don't come with the merchandise that you specified. Okay, we did a story earlier on about a customs broker in, T in uh, San Diego who mm -hmm. moves goods back and forth. Is your broker one broker for all of this, or does each vendor that you work with, each manufacturer, have its broker? Okay, we are direct buyers. I visit the factories that I deal with all over the world, and I specify my products. In as much as the broker that we use to handle our paperwork, U.S. Customs releases and so on, we use one broker in Tampa that has been here for generations, actually, and it's a very good one. So that makes it easy? Absolutely. One broker, many factories coming in, but one broker. Right, you cannot do that all the time, because if you bring merchandise to various ports in the country, it might be easier for you to work with local brokers, less expensive. But in our case, since we bring all the merchandise to the state of Florida, then we use one broker located in the city of Tampa. How did you select your factories, your manufacturers? Um, these products are beautiful. We select the product lines that we want to work with based on the necessities of our market location. Uh, we do sell materials statewide and even out of the state. Uh, but in Florida, I make myself fully aware of the needs of the market for these products. And in doing so, I try to be ahead of my competitors by bringing products that will be in line within the next year or two years uh, from current styles. By doing so, I keep a step ahead of the competition, number one, but also in doing your research as to the marketplace, then you're able to select the products that you want to deal with. In as much as my clients, we do have salespeople that visit them, call upon them statewide, and that way we supply them with the samples or the necessities they have for these products. So Tile Connection does have salespeople out across the state. Yes, we do primarily wholesale statewide. In Jimmy's and Maria's home, of course, we found tile everywhere. This particular tile is called porcelain tile. The reason that was selected for this house is that it goes with the decoration, the overall color scheme of the house. And no matter how much traffic you have, it will last you forever. It's also a very hygienic product to use. Bacteria doesn't grow on these products. Maintenance-wise, it's probably the easiest flooring or walls to maintain, for that matter. You don't need to use chemicals. You should not use any chemicals to clean these products. Good ceramic tile, you should sweep, sweep, excuse me, or vacuum. If, whenever necessary, to protect it from sand primarily, which is the number one cause for scratching the flooring. Sand being quartz material, a very strong mineral, we make sandpaper with. But the cleaning should be done with mopping those floors with plain water. Warm water if you need to remove some extra dirt or adding detergent to the water to break up grease or any other dirt. Just maintain your floors or walls the same way you clean your dishes. Same products, a ceramic just the same. Why does it have to be imported? Well, we have a variety of products that are not manufactured here in the States or that 
if it's manufactured in the States by the few companies that we have uh, here in North America, uh, the, the quantities are too limited for the styles we want. Europe especially has excellent variety of pr uh, products and the prices are actually lower than we can produce them here in the States. So I select my manufacturers based on their quality controls of the product lines, the availability of the products, and of course the pricing that we're able to obtain them from. These are manufacturers that produce excellent quality material and they're very reliable. I don't want to deal with factories that are not reliable or that do not produce the quality that we need to have. What do you do to keep the suppliers happy? I make sure that the products are well represented in our market area, number one. In as much as paying them for those products that they send in us, I'm in a position that I don't open any letters of credits to any a distributor, factory that sends us merchandise. We don't have to pay ahead of time. We have an excellent credit rating with factories all over the world. And, and you build that up. It doesn't come out first. You, you must build that up. But when we pay them, we pay them in time. That to me is sacred. That money doesn't belong to us. It belongs to the supplier who in turn will need that money to pay their employees as well as the material suppliers to them. So we make sure that through the international division of the bank that I deal with, any monies that are sent to them are sent via SWIFT, that's bank to bank, and are paid the day they are due. Jimmy thinks more of us should be doing business internationally. Many of us in the country feel that isolation is the proper way to go. That was okay 200 years ago, but we are surrounded by friendly nations that are within reach in short hours by plane or in seconds by fax, telephone, and so on. The world is getting too small. Technology has brought it closer and closer to us as well as us to them. The more we look for international places to deal with, the more chances of success we can have. We can sell our products to those people as well as buy their products and distribute them like I'm doing in this country. So there are many opportunities out there. For those individuals that only speak one language, that's fine. English is the most widely spoken language in the country. But you could also obtain services of translators that are very easy to obtain, not only through the Commerce Department, U.S. Commerce Department, chambers of commerce in many cities, but also with private companies that offer those services. And there are many products out there that we need, the local communities, and they're not, uh, no one is taking advantage of uh, bringing them in and distributing them. There are small business owners who are afraid to do business outside of this country. Could you give us some tips, some advice that would reduce our fear? A prospective importer should not be totally nervous to deal with factories overseas, but needs to be very cautious as to who he deals with and how he does his uh, transactions with. Because unless you know the company or manufacturers or agents that you're dealing with overseas, you could lose your money very easily. All right. You need to go to trade shows. And at the trade shows, you learn, you get into contact with manufacturers, with agents that represent those manufacturers as well. You need to do a lot of homework in finding out the products that you need to buy and whether or not they're good products for your marketplace. And also, you also need to do a lot of homework as to the pricing that those manufacturers or distributors will sell you the products, whether or not they will be competitive in your area, and the acceptance to the public of those items as well. Once you've done the research, then what? What's the next step? When you start dealing with, especially internationally, which is what we do as far as bringing the products that we distribute, you must learn to weed out uh, those factories that do not produce the quality that you expect, do not maintain quality controls, or who are not reliable. And there are many of those. For example, in Europe, you have about a thousand factories between, of this industry between the countries of Spain and Italy. And probably 50 or maybe 100 of those factories are worth dealing with as far as we are concerned for our market. Really? The rest produce junk. So only 10% are good enough for you? To us. I'm very selective with factories. They have to be large enough to be able to supply us with the quantities that we need to. The quality control has to be there on permanent basis, not on your first shipment or on your second one, but all the time. They have to have the support that we need as far as customer relationships. If a problem arises because of quality problems in the material, we need those factories to back us up. Now, we only deal in first quality material, so we don't have any problem as far as the factory not being responsible for the materials. 
The world is shrinking, and Jimmy Fand is a citizen of the world. Born in Columbia, he traveled on three continents as a teenager, landed in New York City, educated himself, and became an American. He speaks English, Spanish, Italian, and some Portuguese. As a customer shopping for a home he was building for himself, Jimmy discovered that in this country, ceramic tile prices were high, and the selection was low. He saw an opportunity to bring to Tampa the world's best tile at a great price. In just a few years, he became North America's largest importer for several of the world's largest tile manufacturers. If you're like me, you were born in this country and only speak one language. Jimmy says that should not stop us from going global with our businesses. If we do our homework, seek advice, and take the world seriously as a potential supplier and customer with technology on the desktop, we can build a global business. At smallbusinessschool.org, there is self-help study for people who want to start a business and for those who want to grow the business they have. From the home page, choose Pathways to Self-Study. Next, you'll find eight steps or stages of growth. At each step, you'll find links to more resources. Also, in the video box for online learning, you can always watch a current episode and you can experience an interactive study guide. When did you start working with Jimmy in the business? Oh, from the very beginning. What is it like to work with your husband day in and day out? Well, um, it has its, the, the benefits of it are that I know what is happening in the business. So he may be away or even he may be, many times he goes on business trips and I know what's going on. If he was sick, I knew. I know exactly what to do. How do you make it work? Well, we have divided responsibilities. In our case, for example, Jimmy may do the buying. I don't get involved. I may suggest some styles or I may make some suggestions when callers come, but he makes the final decision. Now, I have sales and I take care of my customers and he doesn't interfere when it comes to the customers. Uh, that way, we each respect each other's position, we don't get in each other's way. Later on, we might express a difference in the way things were handled. You mean after the customer leaves? After the customer leaves. It's been said, success builds confidence, failure teaches. I had other businesses that for one reason or another did not materialize to the full extent that I wanted them to materialize. Whoa. Well, let's go back. Let's yes. go back. Okay, so you've had some failed businesses. I had bad partnerships, let's put it that way. The Tile Connection is a fabulous business with strong revenues and profits and is a success. But Jimmy learned much when a previous business failed. Everything hasn't always been perfect. What are some of the mistakes you've made? In the previous company, I made two basic mistakes, very made big mistakes. One, that we had too much overhead, too many people doing nothing. Sales is what produces and lets the company flow. The second one was that I chose the wrong partner, and that was detrimental to, the, to my business to a point that it actually ended up with closing the company. So a piece of advice about running a small business. Choose who you get associated with, Choose your employees very carefully and make sure that you run a trim operation that everyone does whatever you're supposed to do and not just sitting around collecting salary. What's the worst thing we could do as the owner? Well, if the, if the company is uh, not properly, properly capitalized, then of course the best thing will be to take those monies out of the company. You must capitalize in order to be successful. If you leave on credit, you would only have so much lifetime to, for that to catch up with you. And many businesses simply go under because they're undercapitalized. You always need capital. The banking institutions are there to help you if you have a good financial report. But if you undercapitalize the company, of course, the company has nowhere to go but to go under. So growing a business or amassing wealth really depends on being conservative. And proper management of your monies. Mm -hmm. That's very important. Mm -hmm. I, I like adventure. I always did. Um, I have come down lately because of my age and the fact that I have a family. I used to skydive. I used to practice a lot of sports that were considered dangerous. But 
going out there, you reach for people, you, you touch them, you look for them, and that gives you a sense of security. Is there a connection between entrepreneurship and bravery or courage? Yes, I think so. And uh, I won't call it bravery, but an entrepreneur is an individual or sets of individuals who set up the goals in creating things. We, we like to create. We normally don't like to buy things that are already created. We start from scratch many things. And that gives us uh, so much power within ourselves. We have that willpower to create, to develop. And that's what our country is all about anyway. A lot of people in the country have gotten used to get things for free. Many people do not want to earn them. And if you don't earn what you have, you don't appreciate what you have. The American dream, which is very much alive, and I do believe is there, and anyone can take advantage of. But it didn't happen overnight. No, it did not happen overnight. I paid a very high price. I went to school, I worked while I was going to school, and I worked many hours. And that is the price that you have to pay in order to be whatever you want to be. Only those individuals like myself who had worked very hard to obtain what they have uh, are able to appreciate those things even more and appreciate what the country has to offer us. Many people in the country also believe that those of us that have come from overseas are not entitled to become successful. And that's the American way. Anyone who works for is entitled to. In, in, that, in that process, you help the country. Mm. We create jobs. We pay very high taxes and enjoy also the benefits of the economy and the place we live. What do you think is most important to you? Your ability to be a human being, to think in terms of the needs of others as well, to create, to raise your family with very high standards, and to bring them as good citizens with a very high degree of education. To me, education is very important. John Morgel, our marketing expert, says there's something more important than what you sell. Most small business people begin to look at their product, and then they begin to look at their financing. But really, the most important thing is, do you have a customer? So what most small business people need to do is to factor in that you need to really understand who your customers are. And the way to do that is to build a database. Now, this is not complicated. This is just fundamentals of business. What you want to do is get all the information that you can on your customers and put it in the database that you can access. Now, once you do that, you can buy off-the-shelf packages where you can take the information, you can sort it in a variety of different ways. But a database should be one of the primary components of a small businessman's total business plan. It's absolutely critical that they have the information on their customers. Uh, what you want to do is retain all the information on your customers, their, uh, their names, their addresses, their titles, their purchasing habits, their growth, their, their, their sales, and you want to keep that in one location. And uh, most small business people will get a competitive edge if they begin to develop this database. And once you develop the database, you're going to find many, many creative uses for it. The most important being, that's where your communication plan is going to come from. That's where you're going to get your relevant information. That's what's going to give you the competitive advantage, simply because you're going to show your customer you know something about them. But you have to know it, you have to retain it, and then you have to access it. That's why you need the database. Our Secretary of Commerce says we should all go global. Hi, I'm Don Evans, Secretary of the United States Department of Commerce. If you own or work for a small business, we can help you find new buyers throughout the world. Most companies that export are small. Some are family owned, or will be in the future. To realize your dreams and help your business grow, contact us at 1-800-USA-TRADE and follow the flag to new markets around the world. Jimmy Fand is not afraid to do business globally, and you shouldn't be either, but you have to prepare yourself. There is plenty of information on the web, and small business development centers and economic development agencies right where you live can help.
The U.S. Department of Commerce has launched a website hoping that more and more of us will export. Visit that site at buyusa.com. Export Hotline began as a fax service. Today, it's on the web at exporthotline.com. You can research potential markets and find buyers and suppliers. We'll see you next time. Small Business School is made possible by support from IBM. We're not just for big business anymore. At our website, built just for you, discover how technology can move your business forward. When it's your business, everything matters. IBM and the United States Postal Service, delivering the promise to America's 23 million small and growing businesses. If you want to learn more about starting, running, and growing a business, come to our website, smallbusinessschool.org. There are streaming video and interactive study guides. The only way we can compete with big business is to be faster, smarter, and better. We are the engine of the American economy. We create the jobs. Small business is about big commitment. It's about sacrifice and struggle. But we do it because we say, if I don't do this, my life won't be complete.